And I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, Jeremy, first of all, I'd like to thank you for being here. Uh, I know it's going to be a great pleasure getting to know you a little bit more. I'd like to start by asking you what your name is and your position here at the college. Sure. My name is Jeremy Atherton. I am the coordinator of the television broadcasting program at Algonquin College. I also teach uh, electronic field production, so which we call EFP, single camera work. Okay. Um, now, when did you become the program coordinator here? Well, I started teaching here in around 2010, uh, and we had a, another program coordinator here, um, uh, Ron Cormack. He was uh, and he was a coordinator, and then I co-coordinated with him for a year or so to kind of learn the ropes, uh, and then took over, I believe, in 2012. Okay, so that was a pretty quick turnover. Am I correct in assuming that you came here with a goal of becoming a program coordinator or being more than just a regular professor in the program? No, not at all. I, I came. I came here because uh, I taught part time. I enjoyed it. I, I think I, I did a good job, uh, and it was recognized uh, at the college. And uh, so I came in to teach. With coordinating, it's uh, it's a demanding job, and um, it takes you out of the classroom. So um, I'm not always a fan of, uh, of being the coordinator because it takes away from right. the classroom time for me, which I really enjoy, right. uh, and it's really what drew me to the program. The coordinating is uh, it's a lot of fun because you can kind of plot uh, the, the direction of the program, but um, it's administrative and it's not as hands-on as teaching, which is what I really love. Right. So um, now, what else have you done uh, before you were a professor here at the college, uh, and what kind of career did you have? Sure. Well, I took the television broadcasting program here, okay. and I left, and I started, I was really strong as a director in, in, in school and a right. producer, and I came into the program wanting to be on camera, that's what I thought I wanted to do, and then I fell in love with being behind the camera. When you graduate from a program like this, um, you can leave the school being the best director in your program and the yeah. best producer in the program but it doesn't mean you're going to start as a producer or a director. You have to put in your duties. Right. So I, I left and, and I, I started doing little projects on my own. I met a, a local producer. I brought my demo reel to him. I showed it to him. Um, he politely watched it and told me it was no good. And I laughed and, and he laughed. And then about six months later, he called me back in and he hired me full time. So as a junior producer. And I, I worked my buttons off, and I eventually became the uh, creative director of that production company. So I, I reached my goal of being a director. And uh, then I started my own production company. I worked a lot on uh, documentaries. I've done shows for Outdoor Life Network. And I did a lot of natural history filmmaking. So that's the planet Earth type of filmmaking, which is really what I love. Well, right on. Um, uh, so you took the program here at the college. Uh, was that a snap decision after you graduated high school is that that's what you wanted to do or have you, had you known for a long time that you wanted to get into film? Um, good question. So I, I struggled after high school. Uh, I, I left, um, I grew up in Sudbury and I, I'm one of a large family and we were all in business, all did accounting and all did commerce. And I felt that that was kind of where I was supposed to go. I always had a, uh, liked doing creative things, but it was always a hobby. I never really thought you could do a career of it. And so I went into accounting, and I was brutal. I, I failed. I flunked out of uh, Carleton uh, Commerce, and, um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I worked for a while, for uh, two or three years, as a, a ski instructor. I became a maitre d', and I worked uh, in high-end resorts, which was tons of fun. Uh, but I just decided there was something else for me, so I came in to, and took television broadcasting because I knew I wanted to be in that media. I knew I, I thought I wanted to be in front of the camera, but I knew I wanted to be involved somehow in the, in the media world. Uh, and week one, the light bulb went off. Like it, it was uh, uh, literally, I, I, now I know what I want to do with my life, and it was an awesome experience. Okay. Um, is there a specific project um, after you graduated that you feel kind of broke you in the industry that was almost your big break in uh, starting your career? Um, you, you get your first job and you can't believe that they're going to pay you to do it. And you get some money and you're like, I, they're really going to pay me. And you do it. You, you over deliver. You do way more than, than they get more value than they think they're going to do for the money. And you just can't believe that they're actually, you got some cash, right? Um, and then bit by bit, uh, your budgets start going higher and higher and you start doing uh, uh, bigger and bigger productions. 
uh, one of my first broadcast pieces was a hair infomercial, hair replacement <laughs> infomercial. I traveled all over North America doing hair, inf they're crazy, but I love doing it. And, uh, and now I look back and I laugh at it and it's, uh, but you know, when I was in the moment, loving it. So you spent a lot of time in your career doing documentaries. Um, now there's probably a lot of pros and cons to being a, a, a documentist, but could you tell me something that attracted you most to, uh, to that field? Sure. Well, they say, what's the difference between a documentary filmmaker and a, a large pizza? And a large pizza can feed a family of four. Um, so, but that's not true. There's lots of, lots of work in factual television. So factual is, is kind of a, a cousin of, of documentary. So what, what I like about documentaries is I never get bored. I don't know where it's going to go. So with drama, uh, it's very technical. Um, you spend a lot of time on making sure every image is perfect and beautiful and the, and the performance is right. Um, but me as a, as, a, as a director, I know where it's going to go and I get a little bored. Where documentaries, I kind of have an idea, but all of a sudden it turns and all of a sudden it's exciting. So in the moment of making a documentary, it's really exciting. Um, and I, I, I still love doing it. Um, now, if you work for National Geographic, I'm sure you've been all over the place and you've been in a lot of nature situations. Mm -hmm. Have you had any scares or uh, close calls, either in a helicopter or a plane, or maybe you got a little too close to nature one day? Yeah, so I never worked for National Geographic, oh, okay. so it wasn't, I never worked for them. Uh, I had my own production company and right. I get hired by national parks and to do videos and stuff for them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all the, every time you're in any kind of close to nature, you need to be prepared and you need to think about what could go wrong. Uh, sometime, I, there's been a couple times where I'd be up in the Yukon in a helicopter in a snowstorm and it's getting blown all the choppers getting, and I just, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I can't even shoot in this because it's such a snowstorm. Then why am I even up in this helicopter right now? So a couple times I go like, what, you know, think straight. Um, and then uh, I, I did a lot of work up in Churchill with polar bears, and so it got pretty close. Well, I mean, within 10, 15 feet of polar bears coming at you, and, uh, and then jump in the car and, and get safe. Uh, but I think the most one where I, was in, where I said, what am I doing here, was I got hired to do uh, profile videos for Canada's Worst Driver. So it's people who wanted to be on the show, and so they call right. me up out of Toronto, and they go, hey, can you go shoot these things? So I'm driving around Ottawa with potentially Canada's worst driver. I'm like, what am I doing here? This could go bad. I'm actually <laughs> calling them on the phone, so they're talking on the phone while they're driving to get them on the phone. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Um, now, I'm sure you've met a lot of people either in the Yukon or anywhere else you've been. Is there anybody that was interesting and really resonated with you? Uh, and uh, can you tell us something about them that have stuck, stuck with you over all this time? Yeah, you meet tons of characters. Um, I mean, the one that, that uh, will always stand out is uh, a gentleman named Al White. Uh, he was actually a graduate of the program. He was the person who hired me at, the, uh, at Core Videocom when I first got out of school. He's the guy who told me my demo reel was terrible. Um, and he just, uh, he taught me a lot about being a, a storyteller. Um, you guys will still edit something with him later on with Randy. Uh, but he still has footage of him. He was a legend in town. He passed away. Uh, but he, uh, he taught me a lot about how to run a company, how not to run a company, because he made a lot of mistakes as well too. So, uh, and, and just about every day I, I think about the guy and, and uh, uh, what he would do in a certain situation. Um, do you have a favorite location that you filmed at? And uh, what really made that location special to you? Yeah, so there's two. Uh, I love Jasper National Park. Um, it is probably my favorite spot to go. It's accessible, as in you can fly to Edmonton and three hours you're in the park. Um, you can see glaciers, you can see mountains. It's, it, it just has a lot of, of nature all packed into that park. Um, so I, I love that. The Yukon has a special place in my heart as well too because it's just so wild and mm -hmm. so rugged uh, and so hard to get to. There's, there's parts that to see it, it's just really hard. So when you, it's rewarding because yeah. you know how much work it took to see it. Um, and, and so that's a, an adventure for that. So Jeremy, tell me, when you're done with all us kids, us snot-nosed brats, when you're done teaching us how to do all these amazing things and you retire, uh, what are you looking forward to the most when you're, when you're done with all of it? Yeah, um, 
I'm, I'm, it's still far enough away that I don't think about it too much. <laughs> I think there's still lots to do inside the program. The industry's changing a lot all the time, and so that keeps it exciting to say, you know, where is it going? How do we yeah. stay ahead of it? How do we stay current? Uh, 4K's coming in. What role does that, you know, smaller phones as, as journalists, you know, where does that all fit? So it's kind of exciting for that. So I'm not, I'm not counting the days by, by any stretch. When I retire, um, I'd like to do more documentaries. I, I really, uh, if I had more free time, I'd do more documentaries. It doesn't feel like work to me at all. It feels just like a, your storytelling. Um, and I love, uh, I love skiing, so I'd probably uh, get myself somewhere near a, in some sort of ski, probably Jasper. Jasper <laughs> Marmot Basin on Jasper and ski, right. uh, ski the winters. All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. You're um, welcome. I feel like this was, this was fantastic. Yeah, it was good. I don't know how to close an interview. <laughs> I just say thank you. Th yeah, thank you. Okay, right on. You just cool. did. Yeah. <laughs>